It's Nutrition and Metabolism, Part 6. Here's where we marked our spot, right here on page 912 at the table. And uh, we marked our spot with uh, vitamin B2, uh, riboflavin, and uh, it's hard to make that out, isn't it? There it is. And vitamin B3, niacin or niacinamide. And um, so, here you go. Um, they have some listings here, which I think is specious, but I'll get you the right listings. Um, basically, we're, um, we're coupling uh, Krebs cycle with um, uh, oxidative phosphorylation. So with uh, each molecule of um, glucose, we're ultimately we're going to make a total here finally when we metabolize all of the glucose all the way to um, CO2 and ultimately oxygen um, well water rather I'm sorry CO2 and water uh, we're going to get 38 uh, ATPs let's make a note of that since we're here we'll have 38 uh, from one molecule it's a number that you need to know for the rest of your life, so you may as well know it right now, and I'll repeat it numerous times to you. Okay, and here are the B2 and B3. You have your flavonoids, uh, in this case riboflavin, carrying two hydrogens. You're having your B3 niacinamide or niacin carrying one hydrogen. And the idea here is that you're carrying hydrogen from here to here. What are you really carrying? Uh, well, you're carrying an electron that goes through here, and you're carrying a hydrogen ion, uh, which comes this way. You're basically you're fermenting sugar, and so you have the acidity of that right there, and it's going through the Krebs cycle just the way you like it. And who normally um, is doing that work in the world is bacteria. Bacteria are the ones who ferment sugar to things you know like wine and that sort of thing, and um, so we actually have a mitochondrion, which is kind of a bacterium that's in the cytoplasm of our cells, and that's why all of this is going on, is because they already have the equipment for doing that. Alrighty then, so uh, we left off here, and um, we were looking at B2 and B3, who are the heavy hitters in the food world for that, and uh, let's take a look here. We have, um, here's B1, here's B2, look at that, mushroom, spinach, and broccoli. Um, after a while, this does not become a big surprise. You'll notice that liver is playing a big role, and historically, back when our world was a cleaner place, maybe in the very early part of the 20th century and the 19th century, it's possible that beef liver was actually one of the um, essential foods. Right, and um, and it's a it's a wonderful organ and tissue for deriving nutrients. However, in modern times, livers are used throughout the animal kingdom for uh, sequestering uh, toxins and for detoxifying the body. So we give our beef, in particular, vast amounts of what's called biosecurity, which would be literally tonnage of antibiotics. Most of the antibiotics in the world that are made in the world. A very small amount of those antibiotics are used by humans, as it turns out. A really vast amount are used by farmed animals. So it's something to consider here that maybe we're not going to be thinking too much about beef liver as a nutrient source. So at any rate, we have riboflavin B2, niacin B3, and we move on. Uh, we move on. In this case, I'm taking pentothenic acid next. So pentothenic acid, let's take a look here at what they say about pentothenic acid. Um, they list it here as B, uh, if we can get close enough to pick up that particular, there we go, uh, B5, just the way you like it. Okay, then um, and what's going on with B5 and pentothenic acid, uh, they list some foods here. And they say it's a component, it's literally a component of uh, coenzyme A. So we're back at coenzyme A again. 
and uh, so I've listed um, those things here in our table on the next page. That figure that shows amino acid, or, I'm sorry, uh, acetyl CoA, and it has uh, B1 and B5 and biotin are all playing a role right there, just the way you like it. Okay, then um, let's take a look here at um, pentathenic acid on our page. And uh, the listings were not that great, uh, but I did find that, and I would cook my mushrooms. I wouldn't necessarily eat them raw. There are some mushrooms that work out okay. Uh, those little um, white button mushrooms are not so bad eaten raw in, in a salad, that sort of thing. But I tend to cook my mushrooms. Uh, here we have broccoli. So we have two really wonderful things that give us the pentathenic acid. Vitamin B5. Okay, then we go to biotin. Biotin is listed. Uh, let's take a look at biotin here. Biotin is listed in this part of your table right here. And it is um, got some items here of interest. Biotin is interesting because it does quite a lot of things. Coenzyme in the synthesis of fat, um, glycogen, and amino acids. We actually... When we uh, create new amino acids, we get them from the essential amino acids. There's 20 all together, and we can resort them. Uh, we can take our essential amino acids and make other amino acids. We have that capability, and that's why the other ones are considered not essential. So biotin is uh, an item that we stick over here where we, uh, how shall I say, transform one amino acid into another. We take the essential ones and make the non-essential ones. And then um, over here in our synthesis of fat, um, we're having biotin over here. And then as it turns out, biotin does play a role in the Krebs cycle. So it's right in there. And so I'm including that with the B1 and B5 here. So um, I want you to sort of have it in that place. Okay. So then um, where do we get our biotin from? is always a good question. And um, here we were listing uh, cooked cauliflower. Cauliflower really should not be eaten raw because it has certain ingredients in it which lead in some individuals, depending on your genetics and so on, leads to some problems um, that could be uh, related to cancer, whereas uh, when you've cooked it, it actually works the other way. It actually uh, eliminates uh, or protects against cancer. So kind of an interesting detail. Biotin here is one of the, some of the B complex vitamins that our bacteria make in our uh, gut system. And so I'm quoting here from uh, Word's Law and Insel and in saying that uh, bacterial synthesis of uh, uh, both in the uh, intestine and probably uh, uh, it compensates for the difference in uh, between our uh, biotin needs and what's in our diet. That would be the case for all B-complex vitamins. So uh, th that's the work of our uh, flora that metabolize the uh, soluble fiber. Okay, then we move on to B6 here. B6 um, has the name uh, pyridoxine. I remember I had a uh, a professor when I was doing working in a research lab, he called this pitidoxine. Okay, then um, B6 is, uh, where is B6 here? B5, huh. B pyridoxine, pentathenic, folic, I don't even see it here. Oh, here it is. Um, pyridoxine. There we go. And uh, it's a coenzyme used in amino acid metabolisms. And so actually it's used for everything to do with transfer of one amino acid to another as well as the synthesis of protein. And so I put it here. B6, biotin B6 and B9 will all exist in this little grouping right here where we're uh, working between amino acids and proteins. And then um, where do we get our um, pyridoxine from? And I listed two items here, which are the usual things, the spinach and the broccoli. 
So there you go, and we'll pick up the next one very soon.